All right, the Xfinity race finished twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> At the to, to some people, yes, it to is. Some people, it's finished yeah. twice. Yeah. Uh, I was standing on pit road watching right out, right out there, and Parker Kligerman took the white flag. The white flag waved, and then the yellow flag waved, and then I'm hearing guys on the radio go, "Save fuel," and I'm thinking, "Save fuel," but I, I understand that it's not when the flag waves; it's when the light comes on. When the caution light, and then I come to find out, I can't see when the caution light comes on. Come yeah. to find out the caution light had come on before Parker passed under the flag stand. Of course, the controversy is I had already seen a shot on TV 15 or on the big screen 15 or 20 seconds before of a car buried in the safer barrier or whatever it was buried in the, the the boxes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the tire barrier. The tire barrier, tire barrier yeah. boxes. So the question becomes, why did NASCAR wait that long to throw the caution flag? And the answer is simple. They got it wrong. They missed it. Um, it was clear to everybody on television. From what I understand, they have a feed of the broadcast in the tower. And they just didn't call it in time. And they should have. Um, and I think Elton Sawyer... I believe, went on Sirius XM and admitted that, that it took too long. They should have thrown it sooner. And I don't see how anybody can disagree with that. They got it wrong. Um, and that, you know, you, you broke it down perfectly, Brett, because that's just part of it, right? I mean, first off, you have them, they, they should have thrown it sooner. And if they throw it sooner, it doesn't lead to the next part of the problem. And I, or maybe not a problem, but the confusion, um, which is, as you said, some people don't know that it's you don't go by the flag man. You go by the timestamp in the tower. And if they had thrown it sooner, it would not have caused all that confusion and debate and controversy and, and, and insults and, and everything that came from that moment um, if they had thrown it when it should have been thrown. And instead, you have somebody like Steve Letarte, who I am so glad, I've, t- I've told you both this, I'm so glad somebody like Steve Letarte is in the broadcast booth to calmly and clearly explain to folks, to race fans, and remind them how the process works of when the caution comes out. And then for NBC Sports to have the technology and the people quick enough in their, on their side of things to go back and find all the different frames to pull up when that light was illuminated and where Parker Kligerman was on the racetrack. But again, none of that happens. If NASCAR gets it together and calls the caution when it should have been called. And that is my biggest frustration. There's no doubt it was a caution. I don't think anybody can deny that that was a caution. So Parker Kligerman wasn't screwed. It was a caution. But holy cow, it should have been called 15 to 20 seconds at least sooner than what it was. And this conversation does not happen. Yep. Oh, I agree 100% with Kelly. (laughs) Uh, and you know, the thing is when they said, well, we changed the camera angles for the next day to, we didn't see it right away. Well, how come they didn't see it when all of us could see it? I mean, all of us sitting in the media center saw it. And my first thought was, I saw it on the big screen in the backstretch. Yeah. Well, and, (laughs) and you know, when we saw it, my first thought when the caution didn't come out immediately or they didn't turn the caution lights on immediately was, are they going to wait and see if that car can back out of that? Because that was what I thought, well, what are they waiting for? Do they think he's going to be able to come back out of that? And then when they waited so long, it was like when they suddenly realized, oh, well, wait a minute, there is a car really stuck under there, and he can't back it out. And they waited way too long to call to, to call that. And the thing is, like Kelly said, it's good to have Steve Letard in the booth that can comment, that can talk about it logically, explain to it to where people will understand it. Because when they tell them to put it out, they hit those caution lights. The flagman does not hit the caution lights. They hit the caution lights in the control tower. And those caution lights and those tam- time stamps of where everybody is is what determines where they're running at that time that the caution comes out. And they have direct um, 
radio control or radio contact with all those spotters. So whenever NASCAR calls a caution to put it out, all those spotters know and the flagman knows. So it's all electronic control. It's not like the flagman puts it out and then hits a button for a caution light. The caution light comes on first and that's what everyone goes by. And they waited too long, just like Kelly said. And, you know, I, there is a human element there, and I understand, and people make mistakes, and that's, you know, understand. And unfortunately, in this situation, they waited so long that it became, to your point, Kelly and Deb, it, it, it became that fraction of a second where it, it caused confusion. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, the human element is you put it out, and then you get your flagman has to have time to react. It's, mm -hmm. it's like in the final seconds of a ball game or, you know, you need time for the human element to, to, to stop the clock. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, then that's now, of course, there's the electronics. The re, the, you'll see reviews and put two seconds back on the clock and so on and so forth because there's a human element in, in stopping that. There was a lot of drama to go with that. And as a result of that, here's Sammy Smith, who had been disqualified the week before. Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer I'm sorry. Sam, Sammy. Sam, yeah, Sam, Sammy, yeah. 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 He, comes, he comes in. <laughs> basically last place in the points and picks up the win and moves on to the next round of the playoffs. So yeah. there's a great story in that, that it would have been a great story for Parker to advance because he was the only way he was going to advance was a win. Mm -hmm. And the only way Sam Mayer was going to advance was the win. Yeah. I mean, it still came down to, you ended up with some great stories. And again, that drama that we talk about with the Roval of coming down to the finish of who's going to advance to the playoffs. So you have, the absolute heartbreak of Parker Kligerman, not only trying to advance in the playoffs, but win a NASCAR race with that race team, um, you know, do something that he's worked so hard to do in his career and coming up short in, in just the most unbelievable way with, with, an, with, when you talk about an untimely caution, it does not get any more untimely yeah. <laughs> than, than for Parker. But on the flip side of that, you have Sam Mayer who for the second straight year walks it off at the Roval when he needs to, to advance. And, what a story for that race team and trying to um, go out together on a championship run. You know, Sam's moving on to, to Haas next year. Junior Motorsports, of course, has been championship contenders before. So there's still a lot of great stories and a lot of great things that come of that. But again, as we're talking about, it gets overshadowed by people having another reason to um, criticize NASCAR officiating for, for putting things in that position.